Hello Capricorn. Welcome to the channel. Happy New Year to you all. This is Asnoichi here. For those of you who are returning, thank you so much for liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. And for those of you who are new, welcome to the channel. So this is a general love reading. And I'll be looking into the feelings and emotions of the person that you're connecting with on a romantic level. What it is that they're feeling and thinking towards you currently. The deck that I'm using is the Goddess Oracle deck by Amy Sophia Marashinsky. Some of you may have been in a relationship. This could have been in the past. It could be current as well. Others of you, this may just be a situationship. And for a small portion of you, wow. This could be a situation where there's a whole lot of energy, but no one's really speaking up. There's tension building. There's a realization that there's something different about this connection. And I say that because you have the past life card, mystery. All right. Interesting. We have here one, two, three, four cards that are slightly on the dark side, meaning this is your person of interest and it's a whole lot of emotions that are sad. They're upsetting. They're not happy emotions. Some of you might also be feeling the same because of this card, which is my past life card, meaning that your emotions and feelings, they are intermingled. You're mirroring each other without even knowing it. So some of you may actually feel this. Others of you, it might just be one-sided. Might be vice versa. Here, I'm going to be expressing to you what it is that your person of interest is feeling towards you currently. My method of reading is just slightly different. When I lay out these cards, I do this to my higher intuitive sense. I have the ability of doing such a thing. I do not channel through any spirit guides. I never have. And I have certain reasons for that. Very good reasons. We have here doubt, followed by order, awakening, mystery, beliefs, play, surrender, illness, wellness. And then we have growth under the bottom of the deck, the overall arching theme. I'm going to express to you what it is that your person of interest is feeling towards you currently. My dear Capricorn, where we stand right now, I have doubts. Doubts about this connection where we were and where we are headed. The feelings that I have, they make me feel that there's a lack of trust and a lack of faith in this connection and the belief that we can be bigger and better than what we are right now. And part of the reason I feel that there is this doubt is because there's a lack of understanding and a lack of clarity. The choice and the decision that needs to be made, that's just not being made from my side. I do feel that in this connection, there is this lack of focus, this lack of direction not really wanting to make a choice, not really wanting to make a decision. But this is due to the fact that there's a lack of clarity 
and lack of understanding and transparency. I don't know which way to move, forwards, backwards, left or right. Because the clouds that were once above me, they now float around me, hover around me. And therefore I cannot see forwards, backwards, left or right, which way is the best way, what choice is the best choice, what path is the best path, I don't know. I don't want to make a mistake. I've already made one. Once before, I've made many. But I feel that it's time for me just to take a step back and just wait. To gain that clarity. To gain that understanding. To make sure that this... These clouds, this fog, it dissipates. And one day I will be able to see that path. That's when I will make my move. Make that decision, make that choice, take that path. A lot has happened in this connection. And I've had this awakening moment that I've realized now is a spiritual awakening. Yes, there was a lack of understanding, but there's a part of me that realizes things and sees things differently. Everything that is around us, the things that you have been through, I see things now through your perspective. through your lens. Everything about you now. I simply just see things differently. I've put myself into your shoes and I see how you have suffered. How you have tried to stay away. To do the right thing. And I realize now that you are someone who I just cannot let go of. I feel a spiritual pull, a bond that can't be broken. The spiritual awakening I feel is, it's unlike anything I've ever felt before. With you, I feel so comfortable. My mind, my heart, my body, my spirit, everything is just at home. I've never felt like that before. It all feels so new, but still very familiar. And in your eyes, I see someone who I've known before. I just can't put my finger on it. No matter where I go, no matter what I do, I always end up thinking about you. The things that you have said and done. The things that I wish I could say to you, and sometimes I feel your presence where I am, even though you're not there. I can smell your scent, even though you're not there. But it's so real. Sometimes I think I'm losing my mind. I can't stop thinking about you. I can't let go, and I sometimes feel obsessed. The connection that you and I have, we have been born and brought up in very different ways. The things that you believe in versus what I believe in. My society, my family, and yours. Sometimes we don't really see eye to eye. My opinions, my beliefs, these differences that exist between you and I, 
Sometimes they pull us apart. We're not on the same page. And because of that, this causes a problem. Because if we are not on the same team, then we are on separate teams. And alone. And you, I have found a wonderful friend. The foundation of this relationship, the situationship, I want it to be based on friendship itself. You make me feel alive again, vibrant, vibrant again, youthful again. In your eyes, I have seen mischief. I want to have fun with you. I want to play with you. There's things about you that just resonate with me. There's a part of me that has surrendered to you. You don't know this, but my mind, my heart, my body, I have surrendered to you. It is beautiful. I do feel that in this connection, the sense of belonging exists where I belong to you and you belong to me. Your wish is my command, but you won't see this. You don't see this. This is something that I realize now. Even though I recognize this connection, I want to be with you. I want to be close to you. And go above the surface of this water and be with you the way that I would like to, the way that you would want me to. But there are things weighing me down. Below the surface of this water, there are things that weigh me down. Responsibilities, restrictions, constraints obligations that I have that I just cannot let go of. These circumstances that I'm in, they create this sense of hesitation. I do feel that in this connection there's this desire for me to now grow and to get to know you more. It seems as if things started off very suddenly, very fast. And I never really got a chance to get to know you for who you really are. You may even have thought that I've taken advantage of you and treated you like an object. And I never really knew who you truly were on the inside. I want to know what things were like for you when you were very young. What are your plans into the far future and long after you retire? What do you think life is going to look like then? These are important questions that I've always wanted to discuss. I just never did. Going forward, I'm hoping that one day we can grow together and I can get to know you more. All right. Capricorn. There's a realization here that this is a spiritual connection. This is a past life connection. And along with this connection, which is extremely intense for both of you, there's a set of standards and beliefs that you just cannot go against. This could be family-related, this could be your society, your workplace. 
But there is a no-no here. A no-no. You're not supposed to be together. This is what the society says. This is what the world says. But the other issue is the circumstances that one is stuck in. I'm seeing the word circumstances. Because of this, this person also hesitates. I see this word a lot these days, that they're stuck in their circumstances. And not all the time will they explain this to you. But know this, they do feel this. They do want to be with you. They want to learn more about you. The only problem is the set of beliefs that they have, where they come from, what they think is true. What they think is right, what their society thinks is right. Tradition. But in addition to that, they have certain responsibilities which they just can't not let go of. They need to make these things happen because there's nobody else that can make it happen. These are sometimes responsibilities that only an individual may have, taking care of someone, a loved one, somebody who's older or younger, finishing certain tasks, certain responsibilities, a promise that one may have made to someone else a long time ago before they met you. Things like that. Here I do see a very intense spiritual awakening. And the awakening here is spiritual in nature because you have the mystery card. So some of you who may be resonating with this, if you find it difficult letting go of this person, if you find it almost obsessive in a way, you're obsessing over this individual, Typically, that means that you do have a past life connection with this person. You could have been married in the past. You could have been betrothed, could have been engaged. You could have been lovers, secret lovers. Right now, I have a pause on my past life readings, but if you really want them, please do send me an email and... You can have a look at my email. It's, I believe, in the description below. Just email me and let me know that you'd like to be on the waiting list for that. Right now I have a pause on them. It takes me a long time to do a past life reading. Here we have a situation where your person of interest feels that things happen very fast. And for some of you, you may have felt that the chemistry was very intense. And... It's like you'd like guys just pounced on each other. <laughs> Some of you. You may feel that. And the reason why, it's because it's a past life spiritual connection. That means it's double the love, double the pain. When I say that, I mean that in a past life, you already felt this. In this lifetime, you're feeling it again. That's times two. For those of you that are interested in knowing more about past life, on my other channel, Asnoinshia Audio, which is on YouTube, I have videos on there regarding past life and spiritual connections. Um, I also have a sensually intense spiritual connection video as well. Then I have some on Twin Flames, Soulmates, Karmic Partners. Have a look at those for some of you that are interested because it will provide you with a lot of insight. The videos on Asnoinshia Audio, which is on YouTube, are absolutely free. Beginning to end, there's no charge on them. So, have a look. It's all for the sake of knowledge. All right. Here, I have the Lover's Path Tarot deck. And with this deck, I have a look at what it is that may have occurred in the first place. Ooh la la, people, lots of people, that's what happened. What happened in this connection in the first place that caused things to go downhill? This is for those of you that may feel that there is a lack of closure in this connection. In addition to that, it could be this person just ghosted you, they faded, there could be this feeling of um, breadcrumbing. 
knowing that they're there, but they just give you a little bit at a time. And it's gotten to the point where you just wonder, where is this relationship headed? Are we even headed anywhere? I have here the five of staffs and the ten of coins. I do read this in the reverse. <clears throat> For those of you that might hear me breathing a bit heavily, I'm just getting over bronchitis. Yes, I had bronchitis. Really, really bad. And um, x-rays came back. I don't have pneumonia, thank God. But uh, there's a little bit of shortness of breath, so you may hear me speaking a little heavily or breathing a little more than I usually do. But I'm on the mend. Here we have the five of staves and the ten of coins. The five of staves here talks about conflict, competition, dissension. Ego-oriented competition and losing sight of what was truly important because of petty disagreements and arguments. Wanting to move beyond these petty concerns and worries to understand what's truly important. Wanting to unify these forces. So what I see here is this individual knew that there was ego-oriented competition in this connection. There were also other people involved in this connection. And because of it, they had some type of an influence on your person of interest, which is where the beliefs card comes in from too. Listening to others. I'm getting the word conflict a lot. So there has been some type of conflict. We're also seeing here the Ten of Coins. <clears throat> So this talks about discontent at home or difficulties with family relationships, elusive success on a material plane. So it does appear that this person wanted prosperity, expansion, property, culmination, but nothing really happened. It did not happen in their favor because they started to feel discontent at home. They were also having problems with their family. And any type of success that they were trying to achieve, it just did not come through. Especially on the material plane. So this person feels as if they did not have the material gain, money, abundance, to be with you and to make you happy because they also had issues at home. Now the people at home, or the society, could have literally been talking bad about you. They may have also been saying that, oh, look at you, like, why are you trying to settle with this person, buy this lavish home or this apartment, flat, condo, whatever we call it? Why are you putting so much time, energy and effort into this person who is Capricorn? Why are you doing that? You should do such and such, blah, blah, blah. You should do this and that. Here we have somebody who is very influenced unfortunately. Whether this is from friends, from society, from them noticing other people and nobody actually talking to them about it. But when we have discontent and unhappiness at home, a person becomes vulnerable to external forces. Charity begins at home. There's a reason why old people have old sayings. They've been there, done that. They've seen it happen. Charity begins at home. The situation that this person had in their personal life, in their home life, whether it's now or even when they were growing up, it's very disappointing. They had certain plans, but because the foundation of the person was not strong, the roots were not strong at home. That tree, that plant that should have been there for years, solid with the foundation, with the roots inbuilt into the soil, that was a very fragile tree. That tree was this person. And whichever way the wind would go, it would sway in that direction. It would become that. That influence are these other people. 
whichever way. It came, it went, swayed left or right, it would follow. Even the leaves would fall, and it would fall in that direction. Let me give myself to you. Let me fall in that direction. Unfortunately, this person did not have a lot of direction. They did not have a strong foundation when they were young. Or even when they were in their teens, or even into their adulthood, there could have been a lot of trauma. There could have been a lot of problems happening in their home, which is why they were discontent. And when one is discontent, they become susceptible and vulnerable to other influences. Their foundation is not strong, which is why charity begins at home. And that can be at any age. If you make a home wonderful enough, accommodating enough, positive enough, people will have a strong foundation. But when you don't, that foundation can easily crumble and be uprooted like that tree. All right. I have here another deck. This is the Beginner's Tarot. Here I have a look at any plans, any intention, any actions that this person is going to take towards you. Very good so far. We have the Nine of Cups and we have the Queen of Cups. Oh. <laughs> All right. Very interesting. This is a very different kind of reading. It's bittersweet. It's difficult, complicated, but there's still desire. We have here the Nine of Cups. This talks about how this person truly does wish for you and only you. That's what they wish for. That's what they desire. That's what makes their heart happy emotionally. They also see you as somebody with the Queen of Cups. They see you as somebody who is very nurturing, very caring, very protecting. Someone who is always very giving in a way, but it's very soft and very gentle, the type of love that they feel that you have. We also have the chariot. This person realizes that they don't want to lose you. Emotionally, this has changed them. And for that reason, they want to rush back into your life. Either they're rushing back into your life or they're rushing into your life. Either way, there's speed here, and they don't want to lose you. You remember in the beginning I was talking about direction with the order card, the order and chaos card, where there's a whole bunch of there's clouds clouding this person's judgment. I was talking about passages, choices, roads, direction. Well, this person found it. So. That's great. You don't have to worry about that anymore. This person was directionless in the beginning. However, the love that they feel from you, the energy that they feel from you has started to change them. And they're only coming back and making a decision because they actually feel the value in this connection. The value are two things. Emotional and physical pleasure. This person has passion for you. They also have love. It's both. It's really amazing. Very good. And they're rushing back because they want to be with you physically. <laughs> they want to rush and be with you in your arms, loving you, making love to you. They want to be with you very close. They want a second chance in this connection. But the overall arching theme is a conflict that they have where they think that they have upset you so much that you no longer give a care or worry for them anymore. They see that they've turned you 
and to somebody who's very cold-hearted, someone who is very much concentrated on the past, someone who's been hurt before but does not want to deal with the situation or talk about it anymore. They think you're a cold-hearted individual now. Not because of, or not because of, through choice of your own. It's not a choice of your own. It's because of the circumstances that turned you into this. Now, many of you are not like this. But in the eyes of your person, this is how they view you. That this is what I've turned this person into. Once upon a time, they were sweet, they were naive, they were innocent, they were mine. And look at what I turned them into. Look what I've done. I ruined it all. It's hard for this person to approach you. However, are they not on that chariot? They are coming into your life. And they want to be with you intimately. They want to be with you lovingly. Because you are their wish come true. It's very beautiful, Capricorn. It's just that there is hesitation coming from their side because of what they think they've turned you into. Somebody who's really been hurt. They don't like it themselves. But they feel that they need to try. And I do see that they are going to try. Just going to do a quick prayer. Here we have Archangel Answer Cards. These messages are brought to you by Archangels Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, as well as Uriel. Okay. <clears throat> so this reading to split into two groups. Some of you who wish to be with this individual, some of you who just can't tolerate them anymore. You've had enough. You've tried your best, but things just never truly worked out the way that you wanted them to. For some of you. Very nice. So, first card's the strongest. We have here a timeline where you have had enough and you really want things to just move on. Right now they are saying right now is not the right time to be rushing into things. They do want you to start listening more to your intuition because maybe it's been a while you haven't really listened. For some of you, not all of you, this is a general love reading. Your intuition is your higher intuitive self talking to you. So do listen. That is your soul speaking to your body slash your spirit. Your soul is much more older and wiser than what you are right now. Your soul has been there, done that. So when you have that voice in your head that you know is yours, do listen to it and pay attention to it. We also have here, it's up to you. This is a choice. For some of you, you want to go on with this connection. For others of you, you've just had enough. For those of you that don't want to be in this connection, here's a message for you. It's up to you. No, this is not going to happen in the time when you want it to happen. There will be perfect timing in the coming future, within the next few weeks or months that could be. In your life, there's going to be some changes. And they're going to be big changes. And you're going to be happy about them. In the meantime, the angels are saying, don't stop giving and receiving love. Keep that positive energy flowing. 
It's important to do that in order to move forward in this connection and the connection that you have with yourself and your higher intuitive self. For those of you that want to be with this person, it's a very similar situation for you. You have no with an exclamation mark. No, it's going to happen in perfect timing. That is like how we tell you sometimes where we're making a cake. You have all of the ingredients. We have everything, everything. It's, it's in the pan. We put it in the oven. Now it's just a matter of waiting. If you pull it out too soon, the cake's not going to be the cake. It's going to be raw. Nobody's going to eat it. It's not going to be right. Everything takes its own time. So here they are saying that, no, it's going to happen in divine timing. And this literally could be from the next few weeks to months. There will be big happy changes coming into your life, Capricorn. And they are saying, don't stop giving and receiving love. Keep that positive energy flowing. And do listen to your own intuition. It's a very simple kind of message. Not a whole lot. But it's telling you to believe in yourself. To think about your own intuitive self, your own answers, your own questions that you have. And what you should do when you listen to your own intuition. Either way, it does say don't stop. Don't stop giving and receiving love. Sometimes we become very bitter. And we become closed off. A hard shell. What they're trying to tell you here is don't do that. Don't stop giving. Don't stop receiving. Keep that positive energy that aura around you and you will be able to attract positive energy and that's your reading Capricorn I hope I was able to provide you with some clarity some guidance in your situations do let me know in the comments below if any of this has resonated I'll see you all again you take care stay safe bye now <laughs>